So when life gives you lemons, what do you do with them? Well, you make a lemon mousse cake, of course. Well, at least I do. So I'm going to show you how to make a lemon mousse cake. This is a perfect cake for warm weather. It's light, it's airy, it's not tart where you're going to pucker up, but it's got a nice lemon flavor to it. Uh, if you don't like lemon, I feel badly for you. So anyways, I'm going to start. It's going to be done in a spring form pan. This one happens to be an 8 inch diameter spring form pan. You can make this in a 9 or a 10 if that's all you have. You're just going to have a shorter cake. Um, I may even have some mousse left over, but that's okay. I'll make little mousses out of them. So we're going to take this pan and we're going to lightly spray it with cooking spray. We're going to set it aside. And now we're going to make a graham cracker crust. And I'm sure if you've made cheesecakes before, you know how to make a graham cracker crust. Um, if you have it, this is how you make it. If you don't want to use graham crackers, you could use uh, shortbread cookies or sugar cookies that you grind up in a food processor. We need one cup of the graham crackers, three tablespoons of sugar. You may have your own recipe. Really, the crust is up to you. Okay. And I'm just going to give that a little mix to get the sugar incorporated into the crumbs. And then lastly, we have three tablespoons of melted butter. Now, you want to make sure you get all of the crumbs moist, otherwise they're not going to stick very well in the bottom of the pan. And meanwhile, my oven is heating to 350 degrees, and what we're going to do is we're going to pre-bake this uh, graham cracker crust for approximately seven minutes. Then we're going to take it out of the oven, let it cool, and then we'll fill it when it's cool. While it's in the oven, we're going to make two things. We're going to make a lemon curd and a lemon mousse. All right, that's good. Let's put it in our pan. Get it all in there. And then, we need to spread out our graham cracker crumbs. And I use my trusty measuring cup here just to pat them down. Okay. Once they're pressed down, then into a 350 degree oven for seven minutes. And while it's in the oven, I'll show you how to make the lemon curd. Now we need to make the lemon curd. So I'm getting some fresh lemon juice by using my little old, old-fashioned reamer. And I'm pouring it through a sieve. And I want one cup of lemon juice. And that's exactly what I have. And that was four large lemons. And now we're going to, I've got this heating up. We need a pot. And in the pot, I'm going to put two and one-third cups of sugar. And I'm going to put four teaspoons of cornstarch. That's our thickener. Sometimes it sticks when I get it all out. And I'm going to just whisk that to combine it. Now I'm going to add the lemon juice. Mm. Nice and lemony. Let's give that a stir. kind of combine it, give it a little head start. And now I have four whole eggs and four egg yolks. And I reserved the whites. We're going to need those later on in this segment for the mousse. And give that a little bit of a stir. Break up those yolks. Give them a little stir. And get this over the heat. And now I'm going to add one and one half sticks of cold, uh, butter. It doesn't have to be cold. It'll be room temperature. It doesn't really matter because it's going to melt. Cut into little cubes. I'm just going to add that in. And as we whisk, this will get blended. And now what we have to do is we just have to stay here for about... 10 to 12 minutes and just let it come to a boil 
turn it down to a simmer, and then just keep whisking until it gets thick and rich and bubbly. And I'll show you what I mean. It's getting to the stage where, what I call the lava stage, where those little bubbles come up to the top and just go bloop, bloop, and it's thicker. And so I'm just going to leave it on for one more minute. I've been stirring on and off, not constantly, but stirring on and off um, for about eight or nine minutes. And that's about how long it takes. Now, when we're done with this curd, what we're going to do is we're going to need to cover it up and cover the surface right onto the surface, much like you would if you were making pudding and you don't want that skin on top. Well, that's exactly what would happen here, too. So we'll put a, a cover on it, and then I'll cover it again with plastic wrap. And then we're going to refrigerate it overnight, at least six hours. So if you're making this cake for a party, you make this, say your party's on Sunday. You make the lemon curd on Friday, you make the mousse cake on Saturday, and you serve it on Sunday. So it's a good do-ahead dessert, and that is about right. Turn the heat off, get my little whisk out of here, and I'm going to pour it into another bowl. Get all that goodness out of there. As I mentioned, I'm going to get a piece of plastic wrap, or if you were in England, you'd call it cling. Put it right down onto the surface. All right, I am now going to cover it with another piece of plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator, like I said, for at least six hours, overnight even better. The next step of our lemon curd mousse cake involves the lemon curd, and some gelatin. In a small saucepan, I put five tablespoons of water and three teaspoons of unflavored gelatin, the kind you get in the little envelopes. And I sprinkled the gelatin on top of the water, and you're supposed to let it sit for about 15 minutes. That's why I did it already, because it needs to sit. And I'm going to put it on a burner on low heat, and what I want it now is to become liquid. In the meantime, I'm going to, in another pot, Here's my lemon curd, by the way. Look at it, it came out, it's nice, it's like a pudding. This stuff is really good on like a scone or toast or something like that. I need three quarters of a cup in here. So this is a quarter measure. I get three of those. is really good. I love lemon curd. I really do. You can also make orange curd or lime curd if you want to. Same way, just get the juice. Follow the same procedure. All right, there's our three quarters of a cup. And on the other burner, I'm going to put this also on low. I want this to warm up. Put that on low. Now, in a large bowl, I need one and three quarter cups of this lemon curd. I know it seems like there's an awful lot of steps, but it's really not. It's it's really a very easy recipe. You just it just takes a little bit of time, like Friday to Sunday. You could do this uh, if you did the lemon curd early in the day. Um, you could do this in two days and get the lemon curd done. I don't think so. There's three. I need seven of these. And then the leftover lemon curd, we're going to save that for the end and I'll show you what we're going to do with it then. That's four. Five. And lemon curd and blueberries go very nicely. So if you had blueberry scones and lemon curd, a winning combination. There we go. That's our one and three quarter cups of lemon curd. There. And save that. 
going to be for later on. Now, I just have to wait till this softens up. This will take a minute or two. And same thing with this. You, you can see when you're looking at this, uh, the gelatin, you're going to see it looks very cloudy. You want to wait until it gets clear looking. That means that all the gelatin has dissolved in the water. You do not want to boil this, however. So you want to do it on rather a low heat. When you first put that gelatin on top of the water and you let it sit there for 15 minutes, when you come back, you're going to notice it's like one lump. That's fine. That's why you heat it up to re-liquefy it. And then all of these things are going to get combined together. And then we'll move on to the next phase. And then we'll almost be done. So I need about another two to three minutes on each of these. warmed up. So I'm going to take them both off the heat. First I'm going to take this one off and then the gelatin. And what I'm going to do is add the gelatin to this warmed curd. Get all that gelatin in because that's going to have to hold everything together. And then give it a whisk. Now we're going to add it to the big bowl. Again, getting it all in if you can. Okay. And then mix this up well. And now what I'm going to do, as soon as this is all blended, I'm going to put this bowl aside, clean up the decks here, I'm going to get out my electric mixer because now we're going for the heavy duty stuff. The cream and the egg, egg whites. So. That looks good. I'm going to set it aside. Be right back. Yeah. So here's our lemon curd with the gelatin added to it. And it's, it's kind of heavy at this point. So we're going to put it aside. We're going to mix up a couple of things to lighten it up. Now, in the beginning, I made the uh, curd and I used four whole eggs and four yolks. This is the four egg whites with two egg whites added. So it's six eggs, egg whites at room temperature and I'm pouring those into my bowl, my mixer. And I have three quarters of a cup of sugar. And first of all, I'm going to make some noise. I'm going to lighten these egg whites up by whipping them and then I'm going to slow, once that I get a little foam in there, I'm going to add the three quarters of a cup of sugar until I get soft peaks and then stiff peaks. into this mixture. Now some people do it in, in, you know, put in like a third and whip it up and then fold in the rest. That's up to you. If, if you are not used to doing it, I would suggest that would be a good thing to do. But I do this a lot, so I'm pretty confident I can make it work. It's just a matter of down the middle, up and over, down the middle, up and over, down, up and over. You don't want to be hard. Every once in a while, clean off the side of your bowl and keep going. And we're not done yet. 
This is just the egg whites. Then we have to add some heavy cream. Everything's better with heavy cream. I think Julia Child once said, if you don't like butter, add cream. Quite a lady. Okay. That's good for the moment. Now, you can either wash and mix a bowl, or if you're lucky enough to have two like I do, you're going to add in one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. Okay. And you can use the exact same beaters. And now we want these whipped up. Also, just like the uh, egg whites whipped up. particularly warm or humid day, you might want to take your beaters and your bowls and put them in the refrigerator for an hour or two before you start doing this. And you'll find that your cream and everything whips up so much better. This is what I meant by putting in partial, like a third of it, and then folding it in before. It's more crucial the second time around. I don't know why. Maybe because you've already lightened it up somewhat. Okay. The rest of it in. Now this is really the end of your mousse cake other than decoration. But like I told you in the beginning, this is a cake that is not made in a few minutes. It takes at least a day or two. So when we finish putting our cake into the pan, this mixture into the pan, we have to let it sit overnight to really set. And then we'll decorate it, which I'll show you how to do also. Now, you're not going to fit all of this mousse into that pan, but you're going to save it and you're going to use it as part of the decoration. And I will show you how to do that tomorrow. Okay, a couple dots in there. Stubborn. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We don't want to deflate it too much. Put my hands off and I'm going to get my pan. Now this is our um, graham cracker crust, which we baked for seven minutes. We took it out of the oven and we let it cool completely. It's nice and cool. It's room temperature. So now we're going to fill up this pan just about as much as we can. over, although I just did. Now I just want to smooth the top out because when this sets, it sets like gelatin, so whatever top you have is what it's going to look like. Okay. That's it. I'm going to get a paper towel, clean up my spillage. That I'm going to put in the refrigerator without covering it for about an hour, and then I'll go in the refrigerator and I'll put a, a thin uh, plastic wrap over the top. The rest of this mousse, as I said, we're going to save it because it's going to be a decoration on our mousse cake as well as the rest of the curd that we made. And you'll just have to wait and see. So there we go. Oh, that's good. And I'll come back and I'll show you the finished product later on. Here's the lemon curd mousse cake out of the refrigerator. Taking the collar off. Looks like a cheesecake, right? Here is the leftover lemon curd and here is the leftover mousse that didn't fit in the pan. What we're going to do first of all is take some of the lemon curd, put it on the top, handy dandy little offset spatula and we're going to spread it over the top decoratively right to the edge a little 
little bit more. Again, anything left over of the lemon curd, great on toast. That looks dirty. Okay. And now, that leftover lemon mousse, we're going to put it into a baggie. Really gotten hard. Okay. Just a little rosettes here and there. Now what I also did, and you don't have to do this, is I made my own candied lemon peel. Now, it's really easy to do. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You could very easily just take some lemon slices and decorate this, but I love candied lemon peel. If you want to know how to make this, I can easily put this on the website. So, just put in a couple of pieces here and there. Mm. I just love this stuff. Just get the prettiest pieces. And there, my friends, you have a lemon curd mousse cake. Looks like a cheesecake. You're going to think it's heavy. It's as light as a cloud. I hope you try it, and I hope you enjoy it.